Hi there. So congratulations, you have entered the trigonometry module. So when students are generally exposed to trigonometry, they first time see formulae like these, like these long formulae like tan 3x and cos a plus b identities. But the thing is, if you don't know what is cos, tan, sine and all these functions, then naturally students will feel uncomfortable while studying this and then they begin to believe in this myth that trigonometry is a very very complex idea sure it has some depth it has a lot of applications in physics mathematics of course and engineering but not complex so in this module you and i together are going to break this myth are going to bust this myth that trigonometry is a very complex idea so let us start with a um, concepts which have we, which we have learned in our previous standard 7th 8th and 9th so somewhere we know if we draw a triangle the simplest possible polygon that the angle and sides are somewhat related uh, you might have noticed when you study congruency criteria and important theorems on triangles so let us do a quick revision first theorem the angle inequality or the side inequality you know that if say let angle A is greater than angle B and angle B is itself greater than angle C then which side then we need to put the sides in descending order so we know that the side opposite to the larger angle will be greater therefore BC will be the greatest okay and now since angle B is greater than angle C therefore AC will be greater than AB okay and now let us look why have we done this okay let's go to the why of it so if we you know reduce the value of angle A we transform it to something like this while keeping a and a b and a c constant okay so a b and a c are constant this b c will diverge less in this case because b c is not getting enough space to diverge you understand what i mean so one conclusion we can make is that if angle if we are reducing angle a we keep reducing we keep reducing Then BC, the upside opposite to it, will keep on reducing, reducing, reducing. This is an important thing which we need to understand. Now, second thing, in this we have taken all the tri all three angles unequal. So let us take one step forward. And what if two angles are equal? What if angle B is equal to angle C? So the thought process should be something like, okay, I know that the greatest angle corresponds to a larger side and the smallest angle corresponds to a smaller side so equal angles must correspond to equal sides and if you have this intuition then you are uh, absolutely correct AB is equal to AC and these types of triangles are known as isosceles triangles and now let us take one even one more step further and consider when three triangles, three angles A, B, C will be equal. So if we look from this side, then angle B equal to angle C and therefore these two sides are equal. If we look from angle C, then these two sides will be equal because angle A and angle B are equal. So we get an important thing that AB is equal to BC is equal to CA. Now this special class of triangles where all the angles are equal are known as equilateral triangles because they have equal sides. So let us uh, discuss something about these equilateral triangles because they are very interesting. Okay, there we go. Right. So let us label this angle as Theta. theta is the general symbol that we use for writing the angle notation. 
So if this is theta and all the three angles are equal, then this will be theta, this will be theta. Okay. And if these three angles are theta, we know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So theta plus theta plus theta will give us 180 degrees. So 3 theta will be 180 degree, which, which gives us theta as 60 degree. And notice this is constant for every side length possible. Correct. So no matter how big AC is, no matter how AB is, theta will always remain 60 degrees. So this is an important property of equilateral triangles that all the angles are of 60 degrees. So now we have done talking about angles of an equilateral triangle. Let us talk about sides. So let us label these as x, x, x because all of them are equal. Now let me tell you one thing. If we draw a line perpendicular to the base, so from this angle A, we are drawing a line which is perpendicular to the base, it will bisect the third side. So, it, which means that say it is AD, then AD bisects BC. Or, so if this is X, this will be X by 2 and this will be X by 2. Two. Now you can prove this using similar uh, congruency, but I'm giving you just a gist of it. So we are, and this length is also called the median because it divides the up the opposite side. The AD is opposite side into two equal parts. Another interesting property is that this line AD, the median, bisects this angle. So if angle A is sixty degrees this angle will be equal to half of A. So this angle will be 30 degrees and this angle will be 30 degrees. So that's it. That's uh, all I wanted to talk about median of a equilateral triangle. Now one more important theorem, an interesting theorem known as the Pythagoras theorem. And most of you know that it's applicable to right angle triangles. These are also special class of triangles which we deal in trigonometry. So let us label this as ABC. Okay. And C, the longest side of a right angle triangle is the hypotenuse. So we can label this as H. Let us call this the perpendicular side and let us call this the base. So the Pythagorean theorem states that if we square these two and add them, we will get the square of hypotenuse. So if I want to express it that P square plus b square <coughs> will give us h square. This is the Pythagorean, Pythagoras theorem. Now why this is true? I think you should prove this on your own and search about it. It has a very interesting proof. It has about 200 proofs. A very interesting theorem. So let us do a quick example. We need to find out this length of this equilateral triangle. How do we go about it? Now I encourage you to pause the video and then think about how, uh, what is the measure of AD in terms of X. So I assume you have a go at it, had a go at it. Let me draw this triangle. Okay. There you go. A. This is D. This is B. We are replicating this triangle here. You know this is X. This is X by 2. And we need to find out this length. Let's call it at h, the height of the triangle, clearly. So for Pythagoras theorem, we know that x square is equal to h square plus x by 2 square. Now students might write this as x by 2 square. Now this is incorrect because, see, we are squaring the base. The entire base needs to be squared. This is an important thing you should keep in mind. So we get h square, you know you can transport this, this is simple algebra, h square minus x square upon 4, easy. We can write it as 4x square upon 4 and then we get h square as 3x square over 4 and h as root 3x over 2, okay. Let me let write this down. 
and again this is a general result for any equilateral triangle with side length x so if you are given that you know x is say 10 cm then you can put the value of x and find out its height so we are done with the basics now the basics required to study trigonometry now in the next lesson i will sh i will tell you what these um, sin theta and cos theta and all these trigonometric ratios really mean so thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed it bye